It's only impossible if you see it that way. Much of what we call impossible are nothing but that. Illusions, false beliefs we've inherited and unfortunately those beliefs prevent us from achieving what we really want. Hey, I'm Anders and I'm here to help you overcome your self-limiting mental illusions so that you can step out and create the goals you so rightfully desire and deserve. Hi, this is Anders Hansen and welcome to Insights to Impossible. In this month, you will learn how to channel your energy in the right direction towards your goal. Most people haven't learned this and the results are an expression of it. So welcome to Insights to Impossible. We help people overcome their limiting mental illusions so that they can step out and create quantum leap results in their lives and in their business. Where focus goes, energy flows, and you represent 11 million kilowatt hours per pound of potential energy that's locked up in the hydrogen atoms in your body. That's a lot of energy, and if you could utilize all that energy, you could light up the city that you're living in for a week. So how are we directing that energy, or are we not directing it intentionally? Because if we're not, your results most likely will suffer. Today is a very special day for me. As you can tell, there's stars and stripes up here over my shoulder, the Star Spangled Banner, the American flag. Today I actually became a United States citizen. That was a goal I had 16 years ago. And when it comes to goals, we just don't know how long time it will take to bring to physical form, but some time must elapse between the time you set the goal until the day it will become physical reality for you and that's okay but how you channel your energy in the interim will definitely decide how long time it will take and how great the results will be so think about this you see a light bulb here too that light bulb is lighting up and it's floating and uh, the light bulb will light up according to the size of the bulb now if there aren't any screen over it it will just sort of light up all over the place it won't light up in a specific direction your mind is the same way your energy is the same way if you don't have the energy specifically directed towards a worthy aim of yours your energy is going to be sporadic it's going to be all over the place and you will not see significant increase in results in a particular area you might see a little improvement here and there but there won't be any significant changes until we really learn to master this. So there are three keys in today's video that we're going to dig into. And the first key to mastering and channeling your energy properly is understanding the power of environment. Most likely you're surrounded by people who have their own paradigms, their own programming, their own mental limitations running around in their mind, and most importantly, their agendas. More often than not, your behavior will be an expression of other people's agenda more than your own. And that's a scary proposition when you think about it. You see, you can think in two ways. Your conscious mind can reason in two ways. You reason inductively or deductively. Inductive reasoning is when you consciously and deliberately entertain ideas in your mind and build upon them. Deductive reasoning, on the other hand, is when your mind is wide open and you just accept suggestions from friends and family. So today, I would invite you to sit down and go through yesterday's activities. Actually make a piece, make a sheet in front of you. Take a piece of paper and write out two columns. In one column, you write all the activities that you were engaged in yesterday. In the other column, you write out what made you do them. And you might find that most likely there are incidents where it was environment, your friends, your family that got you to do things. That means your energy wasn't actually consciously directed. Your energy was directed towards an aim that was chosen by somebody else. And I'm not saying we shouldn't help friends and family, but we should become aware of how much time we spend living up to other people's agendas other than our own. So that is the first step in mastering Channeling your energy more specifically towards your goal is learning how to say no with love and respect. And that takes us to the second step. The second step in channeling your energy towards your worthy aim is to set and maintain boundaries. 
Again, your ability to say no with love and respect will be your your ability to do that will be in proportion to your goal being manifested. In other words, the more you say no, the more you say yes to your goal. There's a three-step process when it comes to boundaries. First, you have to set the boundary. You have to identify it, whether it's an intellectual boundary, an emotional boundary, or a, God forbid, a physical boundary. An intellectual boundary would be a boundary that you set if you're being bombarded with ideas that you know do not serve you. An emotional boundary is a boundary you set when somebody around you is in a negative vibration and they're unwilling and unable to change it. If they're unable, you can help them. If they're unwilling, you have to create space. You cannot afford to be in a negative vibration. That's an emotional boundary that you have to identify. If it's a physical boundary, get the heck out. All right? That's all I'm going to say about that. Most likely, it's an intellectual boundary. You're being bombarded with ideas that aren't serving you. So you have to identify it, get it down on paper. The second step is to communicate the boundary. You have to actually, if it's a person that, let's say, keep calling you and they talk about the same negative concepts, communicate that your boundary goes here. You're no longer going to engage in more conversation about things that do not serve you. So it has, and that's probably the hardest part. It has to be communicated. And the third step when it comes to boundaries is of course to maintain the boundary. And in the beginning, people around you will challenge you on those boundaries, such as, oh, you're not a real friend. You're very selfish now. You don't want to listen to all my problems and all my baggage. And your job is to say, in fact, you're right. It does not serve me and it doesn't serve you. So unless and until you're unwilling, unless and until you're willing to change this, I'm going to be unwilling to listen to more of it. So one, identify the boundary, two, communicate the boundary, and three, maintain it, which is probably the hardest part. And when it comes to channeling your energy, the third step in really mastering that is to forgive, to forgive others and to forgive yourself. But if you're not properly understanding the concept, if you don't really get this, there's a big likelihood that you say on a conscious level, of course I've forgiven them, and on a subjective level, you really haven't. I wish they came back and apologized. Have we really forgiven them then? Out of the Course in Miracles, there's four steps to forgiveness, and it's really powerful. The more you forgive, the more you harness and master your own energy and the more you can channel it towards your desired objective. But if you haven't forgiven yourself or others, you have not mastered the concept and the past will be defining your future like a shadow. The first step when it comes to forgiveness is to realize that you could not have a prisoner without the warden. Uh, when you release one, you set the other one free. The second step is to realize that forgiveness creates a sh shift in perception that makes us aware of love's presence. Now, that was a big mouthful. What does that really mean? When we truly forgive, it creates a shift in perception where we create compassion. It might be a person who did something, who said something. It wasn't right. It could have been terrible. But people do things generally out of two reasons, to gain love or to express love. And some people do a lot of foolish things to gain attention. Let's say a gang member will take a gun and point it to another person's head. All of a sudden they are significant. They feel significant. They feel something they may not have felt their whole life. Even though the physical act was terrible. And so when we go a little further and get into that person's mind and maybe go back the timeline and realize that they were just a scared little girl or a scared little boy that grew older and did stupid things. We can find compassion for that scared little boy or scared little girl. And the more we do that, the more compassion we find, the more we truly forgive. And we see beautiful examples of that with people who have committed terrible crimes and, um, you know, other people that were involved, they can all of a sudden meet up and they can, they can, you know, they can embrace each other. And uh, that's truly what for the second step in forgiveness is. It creates a shift in perception that makes you aware of love's presence. Because there were good things in that person too. They just didn't know how to express it properly. And the third step in forgiveness, it's a process. It will take some time. It's not done, one and done. It might take some time. You have to sit down and consciously focus on this over a significant period of time. 
And uh, the fourth step is that it is a decision. Nobody can do it for you, but you can do it for you. So these three subjects, the power of environment, the more you learn to say no, the second step, the more you set and maintain boundaries, and three, the more you forgive, the more you harness and channel your energy towards your worthy aim. And if you feel that you want to take this to the next level, I have a free opportunity for you. You can join our Gratitude Magic Challenge. It comes with solid, simple steps to follow over 10 days that will help you harness your energy and propel you forward towards your goal in a quantum leap. We have had thousands of people through this challenge and we've had so much great feedback on it. So you can click the link below and join it right now for free. And your future self will thank you. It's tangible steps to follow and your energy frequency will just change so dramatically. I promise you. And the second step I would encourage you to follow through on is to check this link out. Two of my great friends, Robert, Pers Robert and Kelly Priscusi, have produced a movie called The Ravine. It was a book and it's now a movie and they produced it and it's out in the world here May 6th and you can secure a front row seat to that movie from the comfort of your own home. And our dear friend and mentor Bob Proctor stars in the movie too. It's a great piece of work. The movie has to do with forgiveness. So what better timing than to get into our Gratitude Magic Challenge harness the power of forgiveness and spend this month watching the ravine and celebrating the success that the production is of this masterpiece. You have a lot of material to work with here. I guarantee you all of this will help you channel your energy towards a worthy aim. And I'm grateful that you're part of our community. And I'm very grateful today to finally be able to call myself a United States citizen and I get teary-eyed and I choked up when I talk about it because it's such a big thing for me. But when we set and achieve those objectives that we desire, it gives validation that everything is possible. It is for all of us. So if you feel you need some help with that, you know where to find us. Our coaching team would be happy to meet with you and laser coach you on the goals that are so worthy of you. It's not who you are that holds you back from anything you want in life. There's perfection within you, uh, my friend. What's really holding most people back, that's all those pesky illusions about who they think they're not. Go check out our free Gratitude Magic Challenge. Secure your seat for the movie premiere, May 6th, The Ravine. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in next month's edition of Insights to Impossible. This is Anders Hansen. Bye for now. I really hope that you took a lot of valuable insight away from this video today. And to make sure you stay updated in terms of everything Real Magic World, including programs and live events, make sure that you enable your notifications and most importantly, subscribe to this channel so that you will be the first to know.